Hi, I'm Jung Wan, and in this video, I'm going to just walk you through all the different features in Elicit. I'm not necessarily going to show you how you can use them to accomplish a certain workflow. I just want to kind of point out all the different buttons and explain what they do so that you can get oriented. So let's start with the new homepage. It's pretty similar to what you're used to in Elicit. The only difference is that now, instead of having the different workflows going horizontally, you'll see that they are going vertically down. So you still have find papers, which searches over a database of over 125 million papers. You can extract data from PDFs, so you can upload papers by PDF or from Zotero and extract data from those. And you can jump to creating a list of concepts or summarizing topics across multiple papers. So that's pretty straightforward. You can still pick which step you want to start with. One thing that's new you'll see here is the ability to add a notebook title. So now the idea is that you can run multiple queries for the same type of project or for the same notebook. So if you want to have a general title here, like RCTs on cash transfers or you know PhD, something like that, you can create a notebook title and organize a bunch of different research queries in the same notebook. I'll start with find papers. So let's say I'm, I'm doing a query like, what are the long-term effects of screen time on children? You can see that just like in current Elicit, you'll get back a table of papers here. And then we'll just kind of automatically guess what title you want for your notebook, but you can also change that. So this is, this is a kind of first table of papers that you'll see. Some of the things that are new, you can see this button allows you to see this table full screen. So now you can zoom into it, add a lot more columns, but overall this should be pretty familiar. And then you can X out of that. One of the other things that's new is when you look through the papers, you can kind of delete papers one by one. So it's a lot easier to go through and say relevant, not relevant, and you know, delete all the papers that might not be relevant to you. Now, the real magic of notebooks comes from the ability to add a new step. So let's click on this and you can see there are a bunch of different options here. And so this is where you can really keep building on your research workflow, taking new steps and going deeper and deeper and getting richer information. Uh, I'll walk through these one by one. So if the first one is asking a question and finding papers. That's what we just did. So if you want to run multiple queries, on, on the same topic, you can do that. And you can kind of have all of the papers from all the different queries in the same place. This is not asking a follow-up question to this. So it doesn't, it's not gonna see these. It's just going to be asking a kind of a new independent query. But you, obviously you can ask a question that's related to this if you want to. You can also from here choose to upload papers. So maybe you wanna study a mix of papers that you find and you have some papers that you've collected. You wanna look at both of them. You can do that from here as well. And again, from here, you can create a list of concepts as well. So for example, if I click extract, I'll see, I don't have any papers on uh, screen time here, but you could see if I did, I could upload a bunch, you know, select a bunch of all the PDFs that I wanted, for example, or I could select papers that are already in my library. And similarly, if I wanted to generate a list of concepts, I can ask a query here, like effects of screen time on children and it'll kind of run this list of concepts workflow, find a bunch of concepts, while I still have this table of papers and I can still look through these papers at the same time. So we can do a bunch of things at the same time here. A couple other navigational things, you can see there are, there's, a, you know, there's a long list of things, so eventually you might want to collapse it. So you can kind of collapse some of these steps. This you can collapse once you select some papers. So I'll just kind of arbitrarily pick some and then collapse them. And then let's look at some of these other steps. So you can see that there's the ability to create a new table from selected papers. What that means is across lots of different queries, you can pick the papers that are most interesting to you and then combine them into a new table, which might be like my favorite papers or most relevant papers or papers to keep looking into. So that helps you kind of stay organized even when you collect papers from lots of different queries and sources. You can summarize abstracts for select papers. That means you can pick the papers that you want to summarize. This is also a really popular request. And lastly, you can chat with papers. You can't click on these until you've selected some papers. So let's go back here and you can pick some papers, for example, here. And I guess I can pick some random cash transfer papers. This doesn't really make sense, but now these, are op these kind of options are available to me and it'll show that I have four papers selected. So I can create a new table with the four papers you can see that it was able to combine 
papers from my public search along with papers from that I uploaded. I can select those papers again, and then I can you know, summarize the abstracts of those papers. I'm not sure how this will go because they're so different. Yeah, it's probably a pretty random summary, but just showing you how all these features work. And then lastly, you can chat with papers. And so you can ask, what are these papers about? And you'll be able to chat with them in a very flexible way. So I think chat is a great way to explore if you don't really know what you're looking for. You can see here that when you hover over this four papers, you'll see which of the four papers were considered in this chat and which are what the inputs to this are. And also, as with current Alyssa, you can always click to see the, the, you know, the full text if it's open access, the abstract if it's not, just see what text we're working with and then navigate directly to the paper page as well. Here you see an option to use the full text for chat. So when we have the full text of the paper, you can, and if you turn this on, then we'll use information from the full text. So we'll, ha we'll have the full text if it's either an open access paper or you've uploaded it. Otherwise, we'll only have the abstract. But if you want to use fewer credits here, then you can turn this off and only summarize information from the abstracts. At this point, we've done a lot of things already, so it might be helpful to point out this table of contents where you can jump from step to step. So you can go back all the way to the top and look at the first result. You can look at the table where we kind of combined all of the papers that we were interested in and so on and so forth. And you can also collapse that if you don't, if you don't care that much. From any of the tables, you can also add more columns just like you can do in current illicit. So maybe I'll just add a methodology column really quickly. When you're done, you can still export individual steps. So you can export individual tables. We don't currently have a way to export the whole, whole notebook. This is basically kind of a long running session, right? So one of the things that's nice is you can get a log of every single thing that you did step by step. So even if you're working on a project over many months, you'll have this record and you'll be able to go back and remember where did I start? How did I find that paper? What was I thinking at that time? I think that'll be pretty helpful as well. We'll also save all of your notebooks here. Let me name this notebook. And you can see it has all of the steps. So you can always go back and continue from where you left off. If you want to move on to a different type of project or maybe ask a totally different question, you can pretty easily create a new notebook and then start from scratch. In terms of how credits work, it's pretty similar to current illicit and from each of the kind of steps, you'll be able to see rough estimates of how much different credit costs, credits cost. So generally the more papers you process, the more credits it takes, the more columns you add, the more credits it consumes. And similarly with chat, if you, you know, process more text by using the full text, it'll also consume more credits. It does not cost any credits to upload papers into a list though, only when you start extracting data from them. Great. So that's a quick introduction to just all of the different features of notebooks. And then in a follow up video, I'll kind of walk you through how you can put them together to do different workflows.